All right, gang, David Shapiro here with another video. Good morning. Uh, today's video was uh, uh, community selected. It is learn AI step by step. This is how I did it. Um, so the first thing that you need to know is um, follow the 80-20 rule. So the 80-20 rule is you learn 80% of the material with 20% of the time or effort. Uh, for me, it's more like the 90-10, um, but I understand that not everyone's brain works like mine. Um, so follow the 80-20 rule, systematize your learning process, create your, your own learning plan and objectives, um, invest in learning methods, uh, learn how to learn. Um, this will pay dividends because if you learn, if you understand how learning happens, you can optimize your effort for learning. Um, and then another rule of thumb, it's better to move on prematurely because you can always go back and review if needed. If you don't know what you're doing and you're just spinning your wheels on one thing, you're not stretching yourself. So the idea is to stretch yourself and challenge yourself and keep moving forward. This is the way. All right, so step one, learn Python. Um, I recommend, I actually recommend that you learn, you start with something more basic like C or C++. Um, I started with Pascal back in high school. Um, then we moved to C++. Um, you know, my cousin and I built robots using basic stamps back in the day. You can do Arduino, um, but at the very least, learn Python. Um, and I recommend taking a multimodal approach. Um, so I started on Udacity many years ago. I was in one of the first users of Udacity um, after Sebastian Thrun launched it because he did an experiment at Stanford um, and was like, okay, yeah, online learning is, is the way. Um, there's any number of choices for uh, MOOCs, uh, many of are free, many are not anymore. Um, don't worry about certifications, nobody cares. Like everybody knows Python today. Um, so uh, yeah, so it just, uh, oh, and the, the reason that you're doing this is to get oriented, just to um, have a curated uh, way to, to quickly learn it. And also books. Um, there are plenty of books out there for, for Python. Um, there, there is like Python for dummies, but these are more like general purpose, like, um, you know, here's here's a broad thing. Whereas um, Deep Learning by Francois Cholet, um, this is this is where I learned, uh, started, um, not not with Python, but where I started with, with AI. And because it's very focused on a particular topic, it's actually a little bit better. So I recommend uh, topical focused uh, books that happen to also teach you Python. Um, so like computer vision is a good topic. NLP is a good topic. Um, but I also wanted to recommend the rule of two. So the rule of two is you always read two books from different authors so that you get different perspectives. I actually usually do like three books now. Um, but if you do these two, if you do at least one MOOC and one book, you probably will be pretty oriented to Python. The goal is to get the basics and get oriented, not to master it. So remember, 80-20 rule, get get oriented, you know, and then and then move on. I've never finished a MOOC, put it that way. Like I've never finished one. I, I go about halfway and I'm like, okay, I get it. This is this is all I needed. Step two, practical projects. Um, many MOOCs do have a capstone project, um, but if it's not aligned with your interests, like I kind of don't care. Um, so once I learned enough Python, I moved over to scikit-learn or sklearn um, to model stock market data. Um, uh, so basically pick something that you actively care about and want to solve, <clears throat> whether it's home automation or Raspberry Pi products, projects or robots or whatever, don't care, pick something that you actually care about. Now, the thing is, whatever you do, it has to be something that you care enough about that you will be able to get through failure, setbacks, and frustration. The key thing here, the point here, is not to change the world. The, the point here is to learn to carry projects through to completion. And now some MOOCs will do that, um, but I found that things that resonated with me um, were, were more important. And uh, so there is no such thing as failure, only learning. I don't remember who said that, but some, some industrialist or whatever in the late 19th century said that. Um, yeah, so pick something. It's not going to change the world, 
Um, I also, uh, so I modeled stock market data and then I took those lessons and, and automatically traded um, uh, cryptocurrency on Coinbase. This was years ago. I don't do that anymore. But I made about $600 automatically trading um, currency uh, because of projects like this. So have something that has measurable, tangible results um, and then work towards that. Step three, build a deep neural network. Um, I started with Keras. It was brand new back when I was uh, coming up. Um, but I think PyTorch is all the rage right now. Um, but anyways, point being is build a deep neural network of any kind from scratch, solve a real problem. Um, you will you will benefit by understanding things like different kinds of layers, um, parameters, density, uh, loss functions, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it's good to have in your back pocket. Um, so one thing that I did was I entered a Kaggle competition and this was before there was any guidance on it. Um, and I was like, I have no idea what, what architecture of neural network to use. Um, and so I created an evolutionary algorithm that would uh, start randomly and then systematically find the best neural network architecture for a given Kaggle problem. It was probably going to overfit, but it was pretty cool. So build a deep neural network from scratch. Again, there are books out there, there's guides, um, but the, the key thing is um, understanding how to compose layers and how that changes the network's behavior and so that you get an intuitive understanding of what it means to have information embedded in a network. Um, step four, enter competitions. Um, I cut my teeth on Kaggle. Uh, there are plenty of other competitions out there that are, some, some are focused on, on uh, machine learning, others, there are other kinds of competitions, there's plenty. Um, the thing is competitions will force you to grow in new ways um, because it's like, oh, here's, an, here's a real world challenge that I've never seen before. The data is messy, the goal is not clear, um, but again, the point is not to win, it's to learn. Um, I never won a single Kaggle competition. Um, so basically I just said, oh, that looks interesting, I wanna learn that. Um, another thing you can do, I never did this, but uh, join a team. Um, I've joined a team now. Um, learning to work with people is a non-trivial problem. <clears throat> um, step five, master language. This is not a joke. Um, learn to write and study language. And I am sorry for all you diehard computer science people out there. No, math is not the be all end all of everything. I know you like to think it is, but it's not. Um, I say this often and that this is that purists uh, computer science and math purists often can't see the forest for the trees. You need to take a step back and look at the whole forest. Since large language models are all the rage right now, it behooves you to understand language. Um, and not just language for its own sake, or as a mathematical concept, language as it is uh, to the human brain. And also be creative. Um, there is plenty of science out there. If you are a diehard scientist, Go read some science on the value of cross-training your brain by doing science and art. Do something creative. Um, I'm an author. I write science fiction. And I would not be here if, it, if I had not also been an artist of some kind. Um, and so I will say this uh, <laughs> again and again. Reading is a superpower. Bookcase. That's how I got here. Remember that dude, Ty, what's his name? Here I am in my garage. I have a lot of books, right? Like, I don't like that dude, but but he wasn't wrong. So yes, read a lot, write a lot, learn language, study language, it is critical. All right, step six, follow your purpose. Everyone has a higher purpose, some reason that they were born. And I don't just mean like the biological reasons that you were born because your mom was pregnant and that here you are. Um, you weren't born to make money. You have some higher purpose. And if you align your choices with that higher purpose, things will work out. This is called alignment. And I don't mean alignment in machine learning terms. I mean like spiritual alignment or philosophical alignment or alignment with the stars, however you want to think of it. Uh, there's a book called The Genius Myth by Michael Mead that talks about this. Everyone had something that really mattered to them. And, it, and it's never going to be like, oh, you know, like God told me I am going to be this. 
Um, that's not how it works. Um, it's more like you know what you have to be doing, right? I don't know where I'm going to end up. I just know that that what I'm doing aligns with my purpose. And that's how I got where I am. I have spent more than a decade tinkering with machine learning and uh, Python and all these experiments with no expectation that it would ever pay off. That wasn't the point. There is no substitute for passion. There is no substitute for that, that immutable drive that we all have. Now, it can take a while to rediscover it, but think of the thing that you would do anyways. Think of the thing that you care so much about, you just want to do it. That's your purpose. And also, another way to find your purpose is it's often the thing that you're most afraid of. It's the thing that you're so afraid of failing at because it's so important to you that you're not even going to start. That's the thing that you should be doing. This is the way. Thanks for watching.